practices in the history of archaeology. When I um, thought about this, uh, um, what I could talk about, at first I was very ambitious, and then I thought, hmm, slow down, um, just that, you know, do something, explain about your own experiences, because you are not going to have the time really to think and, you know, let the young people, uh, or the people as old as I am, or even older, be, um, uh, to do uh, this. Uh, but um, anyway, um, I've included some things. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, sources that we have for the history of archaeology, uh, as you know, publications, academic uh, publications, non academic uh, publications, archival uh, sources, uh, which include official documents, correspondence, and many other things and oral sources we can also have for the most uh, recent um, history of archaeology. Uh, but have historians of archaeology always seen uh, these as the possible sources? And in fact, if we go to the history of archaeology, to the history of historians of archaeology, um, that wasn't the case. And um, I'm, I'm going to present here a biased uh, view, because in fact, um, I, I thought about this uh, in, the, in the framework of, um, of a talk that I gave in the UK once. Uh, so in fact, I, this wouldn't be um, good for everybody and for every country. But I'm sure that we could trace similar lines somewhere. So um, when I was thinking, you know, what, who was the first one on the history of archaeology? And um, the earliest book I can find uh, is uh, uh, Adolf Michaelis, uh, Die Archäologischen uh, Entdeckungen, uh, der 19. Jahrhundert, so something about the history of archaeology in the 19th century. And this, in the UK context, was picked up by uh, John Myers, who wrote um, a review about um, this. And in this review, um, you know, I've then gone to Michaelis and um, in fact, um, Michael was not talking that much about the political context of archaeology, but Myers was. Um, and, um, you know, in that summary of uh, the book, uh, the review, he really talks about, um, you know, ways of understanding archaeology, the role of museums and galleries, and, uh, you know, he talks about a Napoleonic uh, conception and, um, you know, sort of the idea that archaeology has a political meaning is included in this um, review. So what happened with that view? Uh, uh, with that view, and I, um, I missed here the slide, in fact was a bit lost because he was um, the person who taught Chai, but Chai never um, was very interested in the history of archaeology. We can see with Kendrick in the British Museum and all the books about the Druids and so on. So uh, the use of the idea of the Druids by modern people and uh, how this didn't fit. And then, for example, we can see that in Piggott in the book of uh, the Druids and so on. But as you see, all these is they, they were not going to be archives. They were just a uh, um, using publications, ideas, that was the source that they were using. And um, another way in which the history of archaeology has reached many of us has been through the work of the fr French archaeology, which at the end of the day, in the 19th century, was the one that, you know, the country that was sort of the, uh, uh, the most recognized, the powerful one in the 19th century in terms of sciences and in archaeology. So we can see the ideas about the history of archaeology in Gabriel de Montignet, who um, um, you know, has this, never sort of wrote a book on it, but has chapters or a lot of ideas of who did this, uh, at what date, and so on. And um, 
Uh, we can see in uh, Les Hommes Fossiles uh, of uh, Marcel uh, uh, Bull, we have a whole chapter with, uh, you know, uh, this excavation happened at this time and then, uh, you know, the recognition of, of primitive man and so on. And all these ideas arrived to Brain and through Brain to Miles Burkitt, who was teaching, lecturing in Cambridge. So, um, what we see, and then from, Cam uh, from Miles, we can see Glyn Daniel. And you know that Glyn Daniel first wrote a sort of, uh, short essay on the history of archaeology, uh, 1943, but then he started to write, uh, Glyn Daniel wrote a lot. And one of the topics he wrote about was the history of archaeology. But the ideas were very much, um, you know, um, uh, who did uh, what, when, and uh, non archivals we can see his influence in Jaqueta Hawks, and even, I guess, in Bruce Trigger, because if you see his histories of uh, archaeology, they are mainly about the history of biblical lands, and this is what Bruce Trigger is also doing in his history of archaeological thought. Obviously, Bruce Trigger goes a bit beyond that, uh, and also includes Russian archaeology and so on, but um, his, uh, his idea of what history is about is within that. But we haven't reached the uh, archives. It was everything about um, you know, data coming from publications or perhaps uh, because of oral history but never acknowledged. And this influence of the French school arrived uh, to Spain through Pericord, and then through uh, Beltran and, and Dupont. And that was the, the, you know, what I received. That they got died before I started university, but these two people were once writing about biographies and uh, a short histories of archaeology and so on, very much sort of in that in style. Um, so, Pericot, however, we see in this um, generation of Pericot, Dylan Daniel was a bit uh, younger, that there is this idea that we need to keep documentation, we need to save everything, because what we are doing is important for future generations. So Pericot was uh, keeping all sorts of letters and, and so on. And, uh, and there was this, for example, in the ar archive Pericot, I found this letter from one of his sponsors, uh, a rich American, sort of saying, I'm hopeful to, of seeing you someday, a written, written record of your career and perhaps another one of the archaeologists that you have worked with. So um, there was this consciousness in the 70s that, um, that histories of archaeology were needed. Um, there was this idea with Glyn Daniel, with uh, in the Scandinavian countries, in, with Ole Glyn uh, Jensen. Uh, Pericot never wrote what he said that he was going to write, and then um, um, um then uh, wrote many things. And um, yes, we have I haven't got the covers here. But uh, also in the 70s is when edited books start and also sort of specialized um, um, sessions. And um, there was this, this letter in the Pericot archive of, dated in 73, in which Daniel and Ola Clint Jensen are organized and trying to organize this history conference on the history of archaeology in ours uh, in uh, May 74. But because people couldn't make May 74, probably still in term time, and for some people that was important, um, then uh, they couldn't organize it, they postponed um, it to May 75 here, uh, and then they were thinking about the second conference in Cambridge in 79, but um, they had problems, they couldn't organize it in 75, they postponed it again to 77, uh, in, uh, uh, then, uh, then 78. Okay. So you can trail all these in attempts to, do, uh, uh, to organize this conference in the history of archaeology that 
them. But the, the idea that they had of, of the history of archaeology, again, it is intended to deal with the historical background in, of some current problems that you are free to treat, to treat, for instance, evaluation of the ideas. So it is the history of ideas, uh, of an outstanding scholar, the evolution of archaeological theory, or the, the idea, the, the word theory is very interesting here, but in way, or research uh, in a given area. So, that was what I received, what many of people of my generation received. So, why and uh, when did I get involved um, in archives? Why? Right, when I was in university, there was this anthropologist, uh, Carmen Ortiz, who had written uh, her thesis, just written her thesis, finished her thesis on an anthropologist in Spain. But no way that at the time um, I would have got involved in the history of archaeology and just I did Bronze Age in Cuenca, which is um, you know, a province in La Mancha, when from Quijot and so on. So, uh, but at the same time, there were many things going on in my life and in the, the life of everybody of my generation. Um, I had lived through Francoism uh, when I was uh, little, the dictatorship, then, um, then uh, Franco died, and there was all this transition to democracy that was a difficult transition towards uh, democracy. Uh, there was also the appearance of nationalism, Catalan and Basque nationalism, and so on. And, uh, you know, there had been all these um, things going on while I was in university, the uh, attempt to go back to dictatorship, uh, then the Socialist Party, the Olympics in Barcelona, and so on. So what I had to do in a postdoc, in the end, I mean, I had applied for something else, but I said, ooh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I then uh, started to do history of archaeology. I was free, I had two years, and I was very interested to understand, uh, you know, this uh, undergraduate uh, course had inspired me a lot. And I, I went to, I, I went to a um, session in the US, and I said, wow, you know, yes, I want to do this. I really want to understand what's going on in my life. And this is when I wrote this about the history of archaeology. And I went into nationalism I, and, and so on. And in 95, um, I organized a conference, the second conference in the history of archaeology. That was in Paris in 97. But in this conference, um, then, um, then I, I became very dissatisfied and by writing all these nationalists because, you know, the dates didn't coincide, someone said this here, someone said that, and for the type of questions I was trying to answer, um, I, I couldn't really, I, I needed data. So in the end, somehow, I don't remember why, someone must have said this to me, go to the general archive of the administration in a town close to, uh, to Madrid, which I had in Madrid. So, okay, there I went, I had no idea. You know, I couldn't ask any of the archaeologists, so I could, you know, you ask and you reach some, somewhere. So I went there to, um, and I was given several boxes of this kind, and I started to go through the, through the boxes. In this time, what I wanted to know is, right, I'm talking here about archaeology, power, but at the end of the day, who is receiving the money? Okay, and uh, um, I, I just went and uh, you know through all the papers uh, uh, and sort of writing my notes, and then uh, I passed this uh, on a word, um, sort of 1980, 18, uh, 18, um, eight, um, uh, This guy applied. This guy applied. This guy applied and got this money and so on. And I could then. So that was the first level then I could then write this table with figures and so on. In fact, I had a, a bigger table and I sort of, for the type of questions I, was, I wanted to do, I sort of, I could write these figures of who had received the money at that time at the start of the 20th century. And then with those figures, I could say, okay, what sites are being favored by the state? And they were these sites. Um, so with Medina Tara getting 25, 22% and what archaeologists or what archaeologists are receiving the money, 
these ones. But then we can go to another level and say, okay, what is going on here is not only nationalism, that in fact, yes, it can be connected with many ideas of nationalism, but also with the exploitation of archaeology for tourism. And uh, because these are the big sites that you can visit now and so on. And also, the money is not necessarily going to archaeologists. One of them, of the previously was an archaeologist, but is going to architects. So, yes, uh, you know, so all these ideas that people have been saying about this uh, official body created and so on, um, um, about archaeology and the power of archaeology, wasn't necessarily true. Uh, the money was going to architects more than archaeologists. Um, civil war, I also went to see all the data of after the war and then changed that, uh, and then went to see how we could interpret the data. And, uh, and I could then sort of look at how politics have influenced uh, nationalism or overcome uh, nationalism, or only allow that type of nationalism, but all the tensions clientelism, uh, split uh, between professionals and non-professionals and have had uh, a lot of consequences later on and architects' influence over archaeology funds is the end. So anyway, I'm going to stop here. I had some more um, examples of uh, then uh, how I did, again I had gone through time, then I went to this other archive in Madrid and found letters and letters of time with Santalaya, so you have a communist with a phalangist down there, a correspondent, how can you understand that? You go to Pericord, um, you know, Catalan, and you find many, many letters, and how you can reach from the letters to uh, other ideas, but at least you are based in all these, so all these sources allow you to do a different type of history. Thank you.